Hello, I'm Amanda Thompson and I'm a visual artist and a writer. I'm Elizabeth Reeder and I'm a writer and we are both part of an endangered landscape artist residency here in the Scottish Highlands. We are partnering with Cairngorms Connect, which itself is a partnership of neighbouring land managers committed to an ambitious 200-year vision to enhance habitat, species and ecological processes in this area. The Cairngorms and its surrounds are an incredibly beautiful, important area containing rare species such as eagles and capercaillie, rare mosses and lichens and montane willows. It includes vast tracts of ancient Scots pine woods, rivers, lochs, moorlands, peatlands and high plateau mountain ranges. We all live in this area and that's been an important part of why we applied for the residency and how our ongoing thinking and work intersects with the place and the residency itself. This residency has been an opportunity to do further work with rangers, ecologists and workers, as well as with local individuals and communities. The residency has been fantastic for giving us insights into a number of the different projects Cairngorms Connects are running, looking at habitat restoration, species protection and restoration of plants such as the twin flower. I've been interested in supporting people to find their own ways of paying attention to this place and to what lies within it, and then to write and make work about this place. In the first phase of the residency, we ran a number of writing workshops that got people walking within the landscape and experimenting in order to gain confidence with their own writing. These workshops will lead quite nicely into the Cairngorms Commonplace Book Project we're undertaking, which really gets to the heart of where the Cairngorms is at this moment in 2023. A lot of the work I do, whether it's to do with writing about nature or in visual arts, is to learn about place by going out with workers and seeing the place through their eyes. What's great about the Cairngorms Connect workers is that they are regularly working in incredibly beautiful, interesting places that ordinarily none of us would go to. So I've been able to see and experience different elements of this vast area that I would never otherwise have been able to see and to think about and make work in relation to that. One of the things I think is lovely about the role of art and creative practices and landscape restoration is that we can extrapolate from the experiences that workers have and take it to different places. So, for example, moths are an incredibly important part of the ecosystem, indicating the health of the environment, yet they go about their business quietly and unobserved. Spending the night with an ecologist on a mountain as she moth-trapped led to an immersive installation at the Centre for Contemporary Arts in Glasgow, alerting different audiences to their beauty and significance. And I suppose one of the really important things art can do is to highlight the invisible things that are happening in their environment so people can see and understand them more than they otherwise would. Art and writing can transform or translate or reveal some of the poetics that are there in the scientific work that's been carried out and take it to different audiences. And what's really fascinating is that a lot of us are audiences of art. And so we witness art or we experience art. And one of the things that we also wanted to do was help people to create work and by paying attention and thinking about how they might want to communicate that to other people. People love this place and love is a great place to start to make work. And it's an excellent motivator for action, change and hope. You're really invested in the thing that you're making work about and invested in that landscape. And for me, that is one of the relationships arts and landscape restoration have. They build individual and shared commitment and understanding about how we are within a place. Amanda works more with workers, and I've been working with individuals or communities, supporting people to think into places that they maybe haven't before, even if they've lived here for a long time. And this maybe offers opportunities to look at familiar places differently with new insights. And then to communicate that to others is part of what I think the arts can do. It can broaden that understanding and draw attention to what's everyday to some, but what's actually incredibly important and beautiful that might otherwise be overlooked. We're very aware that the Cairn Gorms Connect 200 year vision is a massive vision, but art can draw attention to the smallest details and maybe show their significance. And that was one of the biggest challenges of this project, to try to keep it focused and achievable, as our early discussions about what we could do ranged so widely, and we still have so many ideas of the projects that we might undertake with different communities and age groups and ecologies, and how they might impact how we think about place and time and change and restoration and conservation. So it's important for us to define specific projects and focus on what we could do within the time frame and allocation I found that workshops were the most effective way to do this, as at the start we were still in partial lockdown. So I started with a few online writing workshops before we could really get back into the wild places, and then Amanda and I ran writing workshops together. 
The main project for Amanda and myself that we're engaged with in the second year of the residency will be the creation of The Karen Gorms Kissed, a commonplace book of the Karen Gorms in 2023, which is a collaboration between ourselves, Karen Gorms Connect, and people who live or work in or visit the Karen Gorms. A commonplace book contains writings, images, and documents collected by a gathering of people to show a place at a particular time. It could be considered a scrapbook where things that are valued are communicated to and kept for future generations. Traditionally, they've held recipes, a record of plants in the area, details of walks, or other documents that give understandings of a place. Ours will be held in a box, and we will also produce digital iterations. Anyone who lives or works here, or even visitors who want to write about or show the Karen Gorms they know, will be able to contribute. And it's also something we hope will be a benchmark in a way for where we are now, and something replicable for the future. Gathering stories, perhaps making intergenerational connections between what's been before, where we are now, and what might be to come. So we're really excited about the opportunity that Karen Gorms Connect has given us to be able to create this book. And they've been incredibly supportive all the way through in terms of helping us connect with other workers and their enthusiasm, their understanding about the possibilities of art and what can and can't be done. We're also thinking about how art might articulate the complexities and complications inherent to this place, as well as listening to the different voices. In terms of the advice we would give to organisations to get the most out of working with artists and developing artist residencies, I think time and space is the most important thing. Not to be prescriptive about what you want us to do. Just trust us to see what we can see from your projects. One of the important parts of Cairn Gorms Connect is to restore montane species of willow and birch at high altitudes where they once grew in abundance. Elizabeth and I for years now have been volunteering at the tree nursery and what's been really lovely for us has been going out and gathering the seeds. Then we've nurtured them, we've weeded around them in the tree nursery, and in the past couple of years we've been involved in taking them out and planting them again. And it's been really fantastic for us to be there for that whole process of gathering, nurturing, planting out. Being involved in this process builds and enacts hope for the future. There's a real sense of community, people volunteering on their days off. We're all invested and there's a real sense of collective hope. I think that's a really important element of the project that we've been part of and been able to respond to. It's absolutely right. We need to be able to envision what's possible for the future and really think into what these montane species and habitats, what these peatlands, what these twin flowers will be in 20 or 50 or 200 years. And art and writing can help us understand and articulate our hopes and our ambitions for those futures.